They say I'm bipolar. I found out about this condition when I was 29. 29 is not too early, but uh, it's still early enough for me to take charge of my life. I was old enough to know what I wanted to do, not too young. And at the same time, young enough to be able to build a life before it got too late. So um, I truly believe that the earlier you can identify the problem, the more opportunities uh, and chances you have to actually be able to build a truly successful life. Once I found out that I was bipolar and understood the fact very clearly that it was stress that was triggering off uh, these uh, episodes, you know, whether it was manic or whether it was depressive, you know, either of the two, um, it became very important for me to simplify my life as much as possible. You know, it became very important for me to uh, avoid stress as much as possible. My original plan was to actually go to a more secluded kind of an area, but honestly, uh, having spent most of my life, almost 30 years in the cities, I wasn't sure if I would be able to cope with something like that. For me at that time, Goa was more like a halfway stop, you know, which was come to Goa, which is not necessarily like a, which a, like a city in that sense. And then the plan was to then, you know, get used to living in Goa and then perhaps move to a more secluded place somewhere. Right now my life in Goa seems absolutely fine and I'm enjoying it and I see no reason whatsoever to leave anytime soon. It's important for people with bipolar mood disorder to accept the fact that uh, their life is fraught with certain kinds of risks and certain kinds of limitations. Trying to pretend that everything is normal is only going to be self-defeating. It's really important to find out what triggers uh, their episodes and based on whatever it is that triggers their episodes, it's important to create an environment where those risks are minimized, where despite limitations, the li you know, your life can be complete. The dogs have been the center of my universe for a long time, but um, I personally do believe that they've made a very, very, very big difference uh, in helping me cope with my, my, my bipolar disorder. For me, they're not dogs to begin with, you know, they're more like people. They are like my children, for that matter. They have this innate way of being able to figure out exactly what my moods are. You know, so when they can see that I'm upset, they will make it a point not to come in my way. You know, they will leave me alone, you know, leave me to deal with it. But at the same time, they will come and make their presence felt. And, you know, so I get that reassurance that, yes, they are there, you know. I think the most important thing, perhaps, is, the, is what we say about dogs or any pet for that matter at all times, right? Is their unconditional love. And they're there to show me that. Honestly, when I moved to Goa, because I had dogs, I had to have a home. You know, I had to have a running home. I had to have a certain kind of life so that I'm there, you know, cook their food, feed them, walk them, exercise them, take them uh, out to the beaches and the cliff top. It became important for me to have a certain grounding and a certain discipline in my life. Well, my name is Aparajita and I'm a vet. And I happened to meet Uvi when a dog nearly fell sick. In the very initial moments of our interaction, she told me that she had bipolar and for a minute I was like, oh my god, I mean, okay, but then I took it as calmly as I could, but I found that she was very uh, calm and open about the situation. Like uh, a lot of people who have a prolonged medical history themselves, she insisted on understanding what the situation was. She wanted to know the details very clearly. And I could see that she could handle it. So I um, discussed the case very openly with her. Let me say much more openly than I would do with a normal lay person. And she, once she understood the situation, she um, insisted on tackling what she could do. So as a caretaker, let me say she was the best because she was totally focused on her pet and completely responsible as a guardian and she 
just wanted to do whatever it took. You know, many times people have a situation like, why did this happen to me? I can't deal with this. But that self-pity was absolutely not in her. I have found one critical thing that really helps me. I think it is a whole concept of self-pity. Self-pity could be anything. It could be, why is this happening to me? Why am I in this position? Why am I alone? Why don't I have support? Why don't I have money? That self-pity can uh, show up in any way. It could be anger, it could be frustration, it could be um, being upset, it could be being sad. If you look at any negative emotion that you have, you can bring it down to one statement of self-pity that gives rise to it. And if you can come down to that one statement, and deal with that one statement, it becomes a lot easier to deal with the rest of the emotions that are there. We all go through emotions that are peaks or lows or everything, right? But the problem is that it gets a little bit more disproportionate for bipolar people. So for instance, a normal person would obviously get extremely sad if somebody close died. Um, for bipolar people, they would probably feel that same level of sadness for something a lot less significant, you know. So any disturbance in their emotional balance would lead them to get plunged into the depths of sadness, which com is completely unjustified for what has just happened. Or similarly get them so hyperactive or hypermanic, whatever you want to call it, which is completely disproportionate to what has caused it. That is actually the crux of what being bipolar is, that the effects are not at the same level of significance as the cause themselves. When I found out that I was bipolar, uh, one of the first things I did was I upped and left from where I was. I left the city, I left the circle of friends I was in and moved to a completely new place and gave myself a completely clean slate. So I could set about creating my identity as a normal person and living up to the standards that I set for myself, as normal as possible as they could be. It's now exactly three years since I've been diagnosed with uh, the bipolar mood disorder and by and large I've managed fairly well for myself. You know, I, um, I'm, I'm independent financially, I live alone, so basically I take care of my whole life. Uh, but relationships are still a little bit of a tricky thing because I am at the end of the day a, a, a fairly emotional person and I guess that is something that goes with being bipolar as well, right? I mean, it's the mood swings and the emotions that get affected. So I, um, when it came to general friendships and friends and people in my life, I know that if I got too emotionally attached to someone, if I got too emotionally dependent on someone, uh, it could become a potential uh, disaster at a later date and I would definitely like to avoid that. So that, in terms of friends, is how I have been for the last three years. I'm not saying that she's below the belt, but she is gritty and she's, um, she's got um, balls. There we are, that's the best way to put it, she's got balls. I think she's a lovely lady, which I like a lot, you know, and I met, uh, actually we don't know each other a very long time. Yeah, since last November. But, you know, but for the short time I think we became pretty good friends. And uh, also for seeing for a person from India, let's say, for a lady from India, it's uh, different, how to say, <laughs> how could I say that? It's, uh, you're very different, for sure. You know, she tends to have flights of impulsiveness. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, and I saw that. She's, I would say, in the spectrum of sort of people I've interacted with who have had bipolar, she's very much on the normal side. Irvi is a real team player because she just she did what she had to, but it was not, you know, to the fullest extent of her abilities because her heart wasn't in it, and that would be true for anybody. Now that she has her own um, company, uh, she would sort of she's more emotionally invested in the same things, um, and you know, I mean, that that just all comes from having sense, a sense of ownership when it comes to romantic relationships now. Now that has always been a very sticky issue for me because the kind of person I am and the fact that I'm bipolar both together don't really mix well. If I am involved with someone I tend to go the whole hog and uh, very quickly at that. Which means that my emotional dependence on that person goes from nothing at all to like a hundred percent mark. It could within a matter of days. Which of course is not healthy in any given circumstance, you know, and even if you did not have bipolar mood disorder, but if you do, 
it's uh, it's scary you know to to suddenly allow somebody else to have that kind of control over your life but i don't know where i would be without my family my brother unbelievable like i would tell him i i had actually even told him myself i said look i'm not able to control what's going on and you know i hate it but you know and i'm not trying to give you a justification i'm not going to do it just be out of spite or just because i need to vent but it's entirely possible that i might be screaming and yelling at you one day and you know crying on your shoulder the other and i don't know how you're going to deal with it but that's the kind of stuff you're going to have to deal with my cousin like i told you i haven't really been in touch with him very much since we became adults so even him i wasn't quite sure how they would deal with it but they were family you know i mean and some somewhere at the back of my mind i had that assurance that they will do whatever it takes you know and they did so my mother has been very very supportive of me she is a part of my support structure i have found that there is a big difference between pressure and stress i can deal with any amount of work pressure you know i have i have worked for 18 hours a day tight deadlines and i have managed that fine without any problem whatsoever it is the stress that triggers episodes when i do get my episodes uh, it does affect my daily life uh, whether it's a, an episode where i'm overly excited or it's, it's an episode where i'm depressed i'm completely debilitated when i'm excited i can't sit in one place i'm hyperactive i'm pacing up and down i can't focus on anything even if i start something i have to leave it and go on to something else and i'm really good for nothing i'm just all over the place and nothing gets done in the same way when i'm depressed I'm completely depressed. I'm sad. I'm mourning. I'm grieving. In both ways, it gets extremely debilitating. You know, when um, you are in the throes of an episode, the mantra that is there in my head at all times is that this too shall pass. I'm not feeling this way because I truly am wronged or something is really horrible. Um, I'm just feeling this way because there's a chemical imbalance in my body, and all I can do is wait it out. When I'm in the middle of these episodes I find work is extremely useful because work allows me to focus I can forget about my emotional problems because I'm you know using the intellectual side of my mind so they are literally you know kind of divided and I find that the more I focus on work the less I'm drawn into this whole pit of being depressed I love cooking. I find it extremely therapeutic. I find that cooking de-stresses me and I really really enjoy the idea of cooking something so nice and so fresh and putting it into my body and knowing that what I'm providing myself um is good food and good energy. If I knew somebody who was um just diagnosed with bipolarity um or the only advice i can actually give people is to be more and more aware of themselves that really is the best advice because the more aware you are of what's going on with yourself uh the more in control you are you know and even when you do lose control when your moods become too heavy for you to lose control you know what's going on so it never really becomes as bad as it can be and i'm genuinely happy being where i am which makes all the difference to me